Welcome to the Experience Talks Zoomcast for uh, the month of July. I am very, very proud and honored to uh, present our Black Art Matters program and uh, especially proud to have the three generations of Black artists that you see before you, um, all of whom I have great respect for. And we're going to talk today about, about how the arts can heal and unify us in community considering all of the things that are going on these days. So um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the amazing panelists. I wanna start with Kamau Daoud. Um, Kamau has been a legendary poet, performer, author, and community arts activist for more than 50 years in Los Angeles and around the world. He began his artistic career as a young poet in the Watts Writers Workshop and as the word musician in the Underground Musicians and Artists Association under the direction of composer and pianist Horace Tapscott. He has mastered the relationship of poetry and music and is truly an urban griot. Kamau is a renowned author of books like The Language of Saxophones, published by the amazing City Lights Publishers and many others. As an educator, Kamau taught in the California Poets and Schools program at Cal State Northridge and the Otis Arts Institute of the Parsons School of Design, as well as many other institutions. For more than 10 years, he was a staff member at the Watts Tower Art Center under the mentorship of his friend, renowned visual artist, John Ottabridge. Kamau, along with master drummer Billy Higgins, founded the World Stage Performance Gallery in LA, which still serves the Lamert Park community today, where he is considered one of the cornerstones of the art movement there. Kamau, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thea Manier is an accomplished, self-identified Black woman creative with credits including appearances on HBO, BET, OWN, and Fox Soul. She has consulted with Facebook Watch's Red Table Talks and TV One, has performed at the legendary Ford Amphitheater and House of Blues in Los Angeles, as well as countless college tours and commissions to perform for the NAACP, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority and other national organizations. Thea Manier's unapologetic work stems from her unwavering passion to healing and her belief that true healing can only occur in a liberated and non-oppressive society. Yeah. She is the owner of Marley Io Creative Consulting and host of the Shaping the Shift podcast. She's also a licensed marriage and family therapist, a regular contributor to For Harriet and Black Girl and OM online publications, co-host of Dem Black Mamas podcast, kinship partner of Black Mamas Matter Alliance, and director of decolonization for the multimedia platform Black Girl Mixtape. Her most recent work, Murmurs of a Mad Woman, an unconventional memoir is available now through Amazon. Thea, welcome and Thank I'm you. honored. My pleasure. My brother O'Shea Kualuja <laughs> is an author, entrepreneur, producer, life purpose coach, and award-winning poet. O'Shea is a 2015 and 2017 award recipient from the Villagers Hall of Fame Awards Foundation. He is also a holistic wellness practitioner in the fields of love, life, and relationships, which led him to co-author the best-selling book, Internal Balance, Would You Marry You? O'Shea, known artistically as Food for Thought, mm -hmm. is also a visual, musical, and literary artist. He co-produced and directed Time with Masters of Rhyme, a Watts prophet and a last poet, and many other productions. Coined the Prince of Poetry by the late great Lamert Park poet D. Black, O'Shea's potent mm -hmm. spoken word delivery is like an iron fist inside a silk glove. He's been featured on HBO, Fox, Soul, CNN, NBC, ABC, and Russell Simmons' Deaf Poetry Jam, to name a few. His poetry, his first poetry collection, Royal Feast, a Literary Recipe, is an ode to his Watts, California upbringing. As a teaching artist, O'Shea works with youth and elders to link generations together to better understand the human experience. He is the founder of Stillwaters Publishing, a small press that focuses on distinct works ignored by commercial publishers. His newest book, Watts, Conception and Misconceptions, 1906 to 2006, is due for release in the summer of 2021. O'Shea, welcome and thank you for joining. 
So first of all, uh, I want to have the audience get a, get a flavor of, of who you all are. I'm, I'm going to ask each of you to, to, to tell the audience a little bit about where you come from and kind of your origin story around becoming artists. To, you know, how did you become an artist? Was there some idea around the idea that the art had to be in, in, in relation to protest and against oppression and, and inequality in a creative way. So just kind of give us a, give, give us a feel for, for how it started for you and, and, and uh, how, you, how you got here. Kamal, maybe you could give it a, give it a roll to start well, off. Um, you know, I look, I look all the way back to my, my, my grandmother. You know, she uh, worked in the kitchen in, in Westwood in a place uh, uh, called the Chatham, you know, and my, uh, my father was playing football at UCLA at the time. And uh, my, my grandmother uh, would be on the bus and see him, you know. And from what I understand from my aunt, uh, that my mother was kind of hanging out with the jazz musicians, Johnny Otis and them, and they were smoking weed and stuff. So my grandmother seen this college boy. She said, I wanted you to meet my daughter. But anyway, <laughs> you know, and so that's, that's kind of how I, I, I came about in terms of just on this, on this plane. When I say my grandmother, it was interesting because much of the family, when they got a certain age, they could go work in the kitchen in Westwood, you know. And when I got of age, you know, my grandmother said, they're not getting you. Hmm. They said, they're not getting you. And so, you know, like I didn't understand it until much later, you know, in, in, in terms of this, the, the box that, that, that a, lot, a lot of us are placed in and, and, and can't see out of and, 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 and things like that. So the, the art developed, I mean, it's a long story. I don't even, you know, I mean, I could spend all day on this, but I'm just saying, in, I was exposed to uh, uh, the work in, 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 high, in junior high school. You know, a friend of mine was in the Khalil Gibran and then mm -hmm. in high school reading, you know, uh, re reading various stuff. And then I found out about the, this uh, workshop, the Watts Writers Workshop, you know, and, and I, at the early, at early age, I gravitated towards that. And then like I, when I see Otis uh, uh, of the Watts Prophets, you know, I, he was encouraged, very encouraging to me, you know, as a young guy, I always say, it's all your fault, man. <laughs> <laughs> so it went on from there, you know, ingrained in, you know, in community, but uh, it's a long story and there's so many, uh, tributaries. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. Sia, how about you? Yeah, it's similar. Like, it's so hard to narrow that down. Um, I feel like I became an artist when I became a reader. And I started reading very young, like, like around three years old, maybe. My dad would read to me every day as a, as a infant and on. And so I feel like the moment I became a reader, I also became a storyteller. And I began to be able to communicate in a way that, you know, I, I was like, oh, I'm good at telling these stories or this is, how I, this is how I demonstrate myself to the world is through stories. I understand the world through stories. And so I express myself back to the world through stories. And so I think it was that early on and it's taken so many varied routes and, the moments of me understanding from that young age, becoming a reader and becoming a storyteller. So when I began to really acknowledge like, oh, that makes me an artist, right? Because there's always like the definition of artists, right? It's, it's like weird. It's um, when you think of yourself as an artist versus when other people think of you as an artist. So I think honestly, people probably thought of me as an artist long before I really fully embraced myself as an artist which was within the last decade, but I had been performing long before the last decade. I was just doing the thing I had done from, from young and not thinking of it as special, not thinking of it as a gift, not thinking of it as a superpower. Um, but that understanding came around 2011 when I really began to understand like, oh no, this is something that not everyone can, can do or feels comfortable doing. And so I think that's when I began to see it that way. But I think other people may have saw it that way a lot earlier because I was, I've been telling stories for so long. Yeah, yeah. O'Shea, how about you, man? For me, it's um, most definitely my um, Watts California upbringing. 
growing up in Watts, it was so vibrant, you know. Um, I, I knew I was creative, I would say, before I knew I was an artist. And mm -hmm. I was creative because we used to have to make do with what was ever in the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. They had a mayonnaise sandwich, a sugar sandwich, like whatever, sugar water, you know, you name it, we would figure it out. And um, growing up in that energy, you know, my mother was a big influence because she, she was a writer, uh, fashion designer. You know, she was very, very creative. And my grandfather, he had a few bookie joints. He had um, this energy of, of, of the 60s and 70s. His name was Mr. Clean. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> I began to watch them and all these different personalities. They would come through the bookie joints. And I used to give these personalities energy you know so then I would go and draw them and then um, that led to me um, you know starting to switch up some of the old school songs and put my lyrics and interchange them so with that being said um, Gray Street Elementary was my first crack at art in the fifth grade I wrote the introduction to a cartoon called The Project Kids. <laughs> oh, it was so lovely. It was a silent cartoon, but I wrote the introduction, animation and everything. So, um, you know, from there, growing up in Watts, it was, um, you know, the late 70s, early 80s, it was a gang bang culture. That's what I grew up in that environment. And then a lot of my close friends started to get killed. So by them getting killed, I would go to their funerals and because I was writing and I consider myself as a reader and writer, I would stand up and um, do a poem at an early age. And I remember a lot of people from the neighborhood used to um, tell me that, you know, the divine has covering mm -hmm. over, over my voice and over my work. So I really started to take it serious after that. And then the moniker Food for Thought came from mm -hmm. all the colorful stories that I would hear in the bookie joints that I would hear in front of the liquor store, that I would hear in my house. And then from there, you know, I, I just really wanted to uh, continue to create and continue to express. I felt I had a lot to say at an early age. And for some reason, I still feel I have a lot to say. <laughs> yeah. You do, you do. So I wanted to do something just to kick the conversation off. Um, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement is, is obviously front and center right now. And I was looking uh, at their mission statement earlier today and thought it might be interesting to just read what they are trying to do. Um, Black Lives Matter was, was formed in 2013 after the, the murder of Trayvon Martin. And their mission statement states, Black Lives Matter Foundation is a global organization in the US, UK, and Canada whose mission is to educate white, eradicate white supremacy and build local power to intervene in violence inflicted on black communities by the state and vigilantes. By combating and countering acts of violence, creating space for black imagination and innovation, and creating and centering black joy, we are winning immediate improvements in our lives. And I thought that was really interesting. I kind of sort of knew what they were doing, but, it, but, but it's really interesting the words they choose. And I thought it was very apropos with what we're talking about tonight. And there have been some gains made. Um, you know, it's, it's been an interesting moment in time. A couple of surveys that I was looking at today, uh, more than 50% of voters support the movement right now, which, is, which I found surprising. And a study that I was looking at from um, Monmouth University said that 71% of white Americans think that race inequality is a very serious problem in the country right now. Um, so, so two things that, that have come from this that have been positive. So Kamau, I wanted to start, start with you around the idea of change. Um, because you've, you've, you've been around the block a couple of times. You've seen a lot of what's gone on in the last several decades. And, and you, you know, you've, you've, we've watched 
Rosa Parks and 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 I Have a Dream and all the way up to Watts riots and the, the second riots in LA and and some of the changes that have happened along the way with legislation and leading to Colin Powell and Barack Obama and some of the other positive things to to now and Black Lives Matter and, and George Floyd. And I wanted to get your perspective on, is this a moment of time like all of these other moments in time where little incremental things happen and we slip back? Or is this a real moment in time? Should we have hope that we have a shot at real change right now? Well, you know, I, I, I do think these times are different, you know, and, and, and uh, it, it was very, very surprising uh, for me to, to see things unfold. There were there were times where I thought uh, so much was lost and that uh, the aspirations had had kind of been sidetracked and, and there were only small pockets of, of people uh, doing this work and, and concerned about that, you know, and, and I, I think that was very judgmental of me and, 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 and the proof is you know, when I see the flowering of, of, of these, young, these young folks and, and the energy I mean, I got a partner, I got a bookstore in the Merton Esawan, and, and it, 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 there's actually literally a line of people trying to get in the store. They can't keep books on the, sh on, on the shelf. And that was what, always one of the things a lot of the elders would be worried about. Well, you know, every, they get the information from off the phone and the computer. It, it's just like a couple of line hit, it's something on their mind, and they go to, the, go to that, and, and they'll get that bit of information and run with it. And, and where was the depth? Where was the research and the study, but but these times has showed has showed me that you know that that things were not as shallow as 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 what I thought, and we had and the ground that we we, we thought we had lost had not been lost, and that the, these these young people have stepped up and they've taken the mantle and 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 and, and taken it further. Uh, uh, so so I do think that this is a very very special time. I do think that there will be things that come from this. I mean, you know, I, I mean, just and just the front line of uh, all these little John Browns and and J and Jane Browns on the front line and the new abolitionists and and all that kind of stuff and uh, you know all these, uh, you know, where 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 uh, that that is different. I mean, there have been integracial aspects of the movement in the past, you know. I mean, but I, I, this this time. And and the kind of energy that's being put forth, I, I definitely believe is 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 different, is is, is mm -hmm. and is and is sustaining. And I think it's important for us to 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 put the kind of energy and vision out there to sustain it and to help it and to support it. You know. Great to hear, Thea. What do you think? You're you're the youngest generation here mm -hmm. of, of all of us. Although you have your birthday tomorrow, so you're so you're going to celebrate another Don't round count. around. Um, I, I, where you, from your experience in your life, do you feel hope right now? I do, and I even feel hope just listening to Baba Kam Kamal talk about it right now. Because that, just when I hear my elders talk about it in such a hopeful way, it, it re it confirms my hope. So thank you so much for that. Um, I think, I think. You know, uh, technology is something that is, has always been highly influential in whether or not a movement is successful, right? And so part of the civil rights movement, we remember that people were marching and protesting years before things really started to take off or get attention, but television amplified that. And so the same thing that we may have been judging because our children were using it so much, this social media and this interaction, is actually turning out to be the same tool that they're using to organize. And one of the things they're using the tool to do is decentralize the movement, right? So before when you could snuff out one or two of our leaders, now it's decentralized. Anyone can be a leader. Anyone can emerge and organize a protest. Anyone can. And so how do you get rid of everyone right now? This is part, and that, that has been part of the frustration, I'm sure, with their attempts to control this movement, with their attempts to um, use the methods they've used in the past to snuff out this movement. Um, I also do feel like um, there's a spiritual component that's supporting us right now, just, just a planetary 
earth energy. There's just a, a completely, um, it's, it, things are aligned spirit, earth bodies that are really giving us this extra boost that we can all feel. And, I, and my goal and my hope is that if we can all recognize that and use this moment, uh, part of what we talk about a lot on my podcast is how do we tap into the energy of now and use it to create the Afro future, use it to create the future, right? Um, one of my favorite quotes, because I'm, I love change. I'm a friend of change. Uh, Oya, who is my Orisha, is change. She's change, rebirth, transformation. And one of my favorite quotes um, is from Octavia Butler's parable of the sower. Everything we touch, we change. And everything we change, changes us, right? So I actually use that quote in my work right now with allies, with white identified allies. And O'Shea knows, because I had to call O'Shea and be like, am I going to step into this den or not? I don't know if I'm ready to, right? Because, because I was like, how many of these allies are still going to be allies next week in two weeks? You know, really, yeah. what I want people to understand is that the movement will continue for Black people because resistance is mandatory. The real question on whether this is different is really up to white America. They're going to have to demonstrate and do something different this time. And so we're creating um, spaces for white allies who have been doing the work for some time, but recognize that they're hitting a ceiling and their ability to go deeper into the work. And so we're adding some um, ancestral accountability, some ancestral healing that they have to do with their ancestors in order to shift this, make this moment really shift. And then use that to expand their own imaginations about what they want to be remembered for two, 300 years down the line, right? Legacy has got right. to be important at a certain point. You don't want to be remembered for violence. You don't want to be remembered as the creators of colonization and racism, right? What is your legacy going to be down the line? And so that's what we're actually having conversations with allies about so that, so that they can use that energy Baba Kamal talked about to make this very different. But I do believe um, like we've demonstrated that we're going to evolve no matter what. <laughs> Black people have demonstrated that over and over again. What's, what's going to be telling about this time is what, we're, what will our white counterparts do um, differently and exponentially to change their course in history. That's great. O'Shea, build, building off of that, I've, I've, I've watched you work with lots of different, we, we've worked together for quite some time in a lot of different environments with both elder residents and intergenerational and staff development, all kinds of different things. I've seen you stand and inspire people around that type of thing over and over again. Is, do you think that, that that is enough? Is that a tool that is going to, to be able to carry the day around helping people like me, the white privileged, the white man, understand what we need to do? Yeah. So um, when we're saying um, enough, um, no, absolutely not. I don't think that that would be enough. I think that it, it must be a collaborative effort. Um, Dr. John Henry Clark says that if enough people is in the room thinking the same thing at the same time, we could shift the axis that the world is vibrating on. I feel that um, through agreement, you know, we would both, um, you know, all cultures can come together and get back to the one. It's interesting in jazz and in music, you know, it's always talking about the one, the one, the one. And as Thea and as Baba Kamal was just saying, I feel that this time in history um, is on that one. Like we got an opportunity to start from the one. So I feel that it would take, um, you know, everybody to be in this energy. However, if it is enough of us that would just agree, we can shift the axis that the world is vibrating on. Um, in this spiritual alignment, you know, when you look at 2020, you get the number four. And when you um, get the number four, it's dealing with the heart energy, that heart chakra, that love energy. So only love will get us through this. And um, love is, you know, people got different definitions of what they, um, their perception of love. But for me, um, when you talk about enough, I say love is enough. And what love is, to be real clear for me, is that love is, the etymology is the first sound of the heart, L-U-B, love, 
love. That's where we get the word love from. So it's this term called stethographics that the um, sounds that the heart and lung make that eventually morph into words. Love is one of those words. What's so important about love is that it um, is self-generated, similar to the sun. Usually you think, why do the sun shine? The sun shine because it's the sun. Why do love love? Because it's love. And I feel that to get on the one, people have to first know that we as people don't have the power to love someone else. Like we only have the power to love ourselves into wholeness. And from that overflow, it will spill over into everybody that we come in contact with. Because I'll wrap it up and say, if we have the power to love our, love other people, that means we have the power to take that love away. And we do not have that power. And I feel that people should start loving themselves into wholeness, all people. And I feel that this is a perfect time to do it because the universe is vibrating on the one energy, one heart, one mind, one world. We're all in it. It's fabulous. Thank you. You all are so inspirational with this stuff. So, so let's talk about the arts, the black art matters. Um, can, what, what is it about the arts that could help this process along? What is it about the arts that, that can get us from here to love, from here to unity, from here to, to empathy and understanding for each other? Maybe Kamau, give us, start us off. What is, what, how, how do we work the arts with this? Well, I mean, I mean, basically, uh, O'Shea, everybody's touching upon it, but the, this, the situation is, is that it, it's this freedom. It's 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 the uh, the spirituality of, of 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 this process of of being alive, you know, understanding breath and 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 time and your moments and and people around you and 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 and, and this organism, this 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 universe. I mean, this vastness, this this. This, you know, some just say, call it God, call it what you want it, but this, this thing that we're in, you know, and, and most cultures, all cultures, I should say, at some point, uh, uh, study, study this and, 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 and are, are plugged into this and, and, and deal with, deal, deal with this energy. And, and, you know, artists, to get to your point, artists, we are these strange kind of beings that 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 are in, 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 in engaged in this work and this relationship with our breath and with and, and with our stories and, and and with our surroundings and 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 trying to be conscious of it and and to and to take it in and and, and to put it to take it to uh, put it outside of ourselves so that others can 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 experience and learn from i mean you know, I mean, this, all of us here, we didn't say we became artists uh, uh, so that we could uh, uh, make money and, 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 and retire with uh, uh, pensions and, and all that kind of stuff. All of us, it, 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 it was, it's something that you, 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 you kind of just move into. And the next thing you know, you, you, you start discovering, as you discover who you are, and you discover that part that part of the work that you do, and it's, so so it's kind of like you 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 learn this. It, it's it, uh, you 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 uh, self realization. You know this 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 yeah. self realization in terms of your your unction, your 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 reason for being. You know, and so I forgot what your question was, man. No, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know you know the essence of the work is healing. You know. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's that and it starts with self-healing you know it starts with you know uh, 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 you know in this introversion of the young poet you know and and in this 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 uh this lack of of knowledge of self and his insecurity and all that kind of stuff you start working through that i remember you, you asked about how it began I, i'd be in class and 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 and, and, and then the teacher give us assignment i'd go up there and read and uh, read what i wrote and 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 it would affect people around and I'm just a young cat I'm saying man what, what you know they listening to me I say so that so when they when when I gave 
and they gave back, it gave me a sense of, of self-worth. And they were, oh, this is something I can do, regardless of what society is telling me and what, I, what, 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 what I'm telling myself. You know, you, you, you get signs and symbols. And, and uh, anyway, there's some, I shared a platform with you beautiful people, so somebody else got to step up. <laughs> Yeah, that's fantastic. Thea, the, uh, what, what do you think? What's, what's the magic of art that could be applied here? For me, art is the antithesis of oppression. Yeah. Right? It's mm -hmm. legal, if they, you know, if oppression is on one end of the spectrum, one swing of the pendulum, then art is on the other, which is like, like Baba said, the, it is freedom. But it's also defiant and something you have to self-authorize. So it's immune to laws. It's immune to classism. It's immune to racism because you can't stop me from creating. But there's no way you could ever legislate that I can't create. <laughs> now you can block it from being published. You can block it from becoming a, a movie in a big studio but you can't stop me from actually creating it. And the creating it itself is healing. Then it has already done its work. Once I've created, I have work that may, may never see the light of day, but it already did its work the moment it came through me, you know? So because it's immune to oppression, it's such a useful tool and has always been to get us back to that vibration of love that O'Shea is talking about. It's always beautiful to me to read work that was done, love poems written during the times of slavery, during the times of Jim Crow, during the times of Reconstruction, right? Where you're reading like in the midst of all this, somebody got time to be in love and then they got time to write about it. They're so moved yeah. that they can write about it and document it, right? And that was a moment of freedom, right? You may be able to challenge whether or not me and this person can build a family, but you can't stop me from loving them and you can't stop me from writing about it. You can't stop me from creating it. And it's this very powerful, non-conforming um, thing that we can always use and that can never be taken away or legislated against. Yeah, yeah, O'Shea. Yes, um, for me, you know, art, uh, along with what Baba Kamal said and Thea says, is all in, um, is all in alignment. Art is spirit, art is consciousness, you know, art is freedom, as Baba Kamal says. And when you think about consciousness, you think about the now, as Thea talked about that earlier. And in the now, you are able to create, so you are able to literally manifest whatever it is in real time that's happening if you are in a situation. Father Amdia, the wise prophet said, you could create your way in or create your way out. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to know how creativity is consciousness. And you, when you think of the subconscious mind, you know, of an artist, subconscious mind have two functions, to record, play back, record and play back. So oftentimes um, there's this term called epigenetic and that's overriding your subconscious mind and one of the ways to do that is through art and that's the reason why it's so powerful you know because you can literally overwrite the things that been weighing you down the um traumatic experiences and all of these different things you can do this in real time you could only do that through art mm -hmm. so um yes art is everything that they said i love just how a young person discover their superpower, as Thea was saying, their super heroes and sheroes through art and creativity. They come into class not being able to, um, sh um, they're shaking when they read the paper. That's so beautiful to me. And then two, three months down the line, they're off the paper and they're just reciting. And now they're walking out and they're having these conversations with people in confidence. Art is confidence. So mm -hmm. I feel that um, any change, when you look at his, um, recorded history, when you speak of change, change has always been depicted in the art first, mm -hmm. anywhere you want to look. And when it's depicted in the art, then a society would catch up to it. Mm -hmm. So right now, as Baba Kamal Daoud says, artists, heal thyself, mm -hmm. radiate and radiate. And that's what we're doing. You know, uh, 
one of the things I mean, we talk about in relationship to this movement today, and you know, and the whole tradition of of of, of the the griot, the West African storytellers, and where the urban griots, the, the 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 storytellers, you know, it's it's what has has been heaped on us planetarily in terms of our confinement. Mm -hmm. You know, there, it was a systematic process to 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 box us in mm -hmm. to a certain life mm -hmm. and a certain way of looking at the world and 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 and, and, and so this knowledge when the griots begin to 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 share with the people to share the stories to teach uh, through that, that that mechanism they 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 break us out this box mm -hmm. you know uh, i was me and moshe was talking about this yesterday but there was this uh, uh, the scholar was talking about this African uh, scholar was talking about how uh, conceptual incarceration mm -hmm. is the worst kind of confinement that you can have because you are your own jailer. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so 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 in terms of society saying that you can't do this, you can't do this, you're not allowed here. You you know, and, and, and you know, I mean, you know, if you do this, I mean, you know, you know that this is going to happen to the fear factor. You know, that 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 fear that 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 was instilled in us to not be, you know, and and, and, and to be subservient. Well, 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 the artist, the artist attacks that. The artist, that when the cat picks up his horn and 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 and, and takes it out, or you know, when 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 the catress, you know, she gets on the stage and she 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 just branches out and blows blows away when the dancer leaps leaps and does all these you know uh, uh, magnificent things that, that don't even seem possible when you know when 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 they show us that they show us that within ourselves as yeah. well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so, Kamal, one of the things you mentioned earlier was the idea that, that artists don't necessarily get into it for pensions. Um, it reminds me of the fact that we have, we have, we have an issue right in front of us where, where what we're trying to do is stop police brutality um, and, and, and have safety for, for black Americans. And, it reminds me that we've gone through some of these battles before, the abolition and, and civil rights and voting and the How Fair Housing Act and all of those things were steps in the right direction, but to really solve the issue, even if we eliminate police brutality, it seems like the elephant in the room is the long-term idea of what slavery and oppression has done for black people in this country. And, and the idea of how we really try and fight that. I remember Martin Luther King in probably the last speech before he was assassinated talked about the fact that if you, if you integrate a lunch counter, it doesn't matter if the black man can't afford to buy a hamburger. Um, and I just thought that was so meaningful and so simply put. And, and, and the idea of economic oppression and economic equality is underlies all of this, and, is, and, and it really is the, the heart of the issue. There was a study that was done just last year where white Americans thought that the disparity between black and white family income, they thought that black American, black American families had $90 to, to $100 of white income when the reality of it was $10. Um, that's a massive, mm -hmm problem, a massive disparity in thought. And it's and it really is about thought, because when you talk to economic experts, the idea of reparations, which is a word that is extremely heated, um, the process and reality of that, I think, has been shown recently that it's totally possible because Congress just passed a $2.2 trillion package to battle the coronavirus because it was an equal opportunity, not completely equal opportunity killer, but it was something that faced, that was was something that, that the entire American population feared. So this is possible, but the barrier is making people understand that it's the right thing to do. 
And it seems to me like that's that's a battle of the heart and minds. And that's a and when you're talking about heart and minds, you guys are describing that the answer to that is the arts. Yeah. So is there a way that we can we can get people to understand that let's get over white guilt and, and ignorance and get to the point where we can actually even the playing field has never been even. You know, uh, Thea, Thea said it, uh, O'Shea said it. I mean, you know, it's, it, this ain't on us. Yeah. This, 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 I mean, you know, cause it's so, it's so embedded. I mean, I heard you, I mean, I could have correct, correct you. I said, you, 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 you said the, the, the 65, the riot, the riot in 65, the riot in 92. It's, you know, I mean, you hear the words slave rather than enslaved. You yeah. have these, these things that are embedded embedded in, in, in our consciousness in terms of the way that we look at it. And, and oh, you muted. Bobby, your um, thing muted. You, you accidentally muted. There the, you go. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the, 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 I lost my train. No, come <laughs> back, come back. We're talking about the, lang the language of, of well, you know, it's so embedded. It, it's it's so embedded, embedded in 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 our, in our, in our consciousness, and and that that's where the shift ha has 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 to be made because uh, I I really there was a point that I want to make. If it comes back, I'll I'll, I'll mm -hmm. chime in because that happened. Yeah, yeah. It's seven so, years old, birds. Yeah. <laughs> So, so if, if I if I may just to jump in um, when um, Baba Kamal was speaking about um, even when you said the '65 riot and the '92 riot, we all know for us riot don't come out of our mouths because it was right. a revolt. And when you're dealing with a revolt um, across um, the world, five causes is almost to literally every revolt. That's poor education, no health care, poor jobs, um, poor housing, and of course police brutality. Once you insert this five elements on any people, their natural um, um, impulse is to revolt. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, for us, we know that, you know, um, the language as um, Baba Kamal was saying, it has to change. Like we're speaking two different languages, you know, mm -hmm. you know like he said, slave versus enslaved. There's so many things. And we know when you look at this English language, it's um, literally the, um, the, the, the mud of languages um, because one word can mean 50 different things. And that's the reason when we go to court, they say, do you understand? So you're standing under this here language, which is very, it's a manipulating language, mm -hmm. you know, in other languages, you can't even come up with a curse word. Like, so to be able to curse, to be able to do these things in English, I feel that a lot of um, people of color, as Kamal was saying, the scholar um, says, get trapped in this conceptual incarceration. Mm -hmm. And it's very important that we all um, raise our, the vibration of our language so we can be able to communicate or even articulate exactly what we are not only asking for, that we are demanding. And that's, yeah. we're saying it's freedom, like opportunity. Yeah. And that's so very important to people of color, like the exact same opportunity. We really don't want nobody to give us nothing. Like, let's just have an um, um, even opportunity. Yeah, I would, I would chime in and say that, you know, circling back and like picking up from that previous point about like the ball is in the court of white America. One of the things we challenge these allies about when we work with them is, and, and tapping back into your point, Tim, about what King said about, I can get the, even if I get you at the counter, if you can't afford the food, right? Is that America would have to, um, absolve itself of its status as a world power in order to properly heal and address these issues because your economy is rooted in anti-blackness your 400 years of free labor is what made this new underdeveloped undereducated country group of people right world powers players on the big on the big in the big leagues right and so since then like i always say in america there's always a 
not been an enslaved person, whether they're incarcerated people working for pennies or whether they're, they're newly, uh, people newly immigrated, they've always had enslaved people here. It's a requirement for this economy. And the problem would be, we're not serious about this conversation about racism until we're serious about saying, we don't deserve to be a world power until we can figure out how to have an economy that is rooted in equity, that is rooted in our values, and where every citizen can contribute and feel fully realized. And then when we can build an wealth out of that, we'll come back and show you what we've done. But they're not willing to relinquish because what's happened is going back to also what you were talking about, the, it's like we think about, when we think about racism, we think about the impact on blackness and black people. But what we know about the oneness is that you, I can't hurt you without hurting me. So we haven't taken a deep look at the white psyche we haven't looked at the, the paranoia and the control and the rigidity that comes with trying to make oppressive um, system on a group of people. It takes a lot of maintenance, right? I remember reading this book called um, The World Without Us, and it was about how within days, if we don't maintain the roads, the highways, Within days, nature would take it over. We started to see that when the coronavirus hit and everybody was quarantined, we saw animals coming out and reclaiming the beach and within yeah. days, right? And so I, I see racism similarly, right? Just like nature, our nature is to be one. Our nature is to be yes. free. And, and, but oppression is requires a lot of maintenance, billions of dollars and lots of energy and lots of control to maintain it because the moment we get a couple days uh, out from under that oppression, we begin to be like Roman free again. And we begin to remember who we are. We begin yeah. to tap into all these things that we thought we had lost and forgot. And so that maintenance is, has been the responsibility of whiteness. And, and what have you not been able to do because you've been spending billions of dollars and all your energy maintaining this? And so now the question for those allies is, how could we redirect that energy into a new future? Because that's a lot of energy and it can be done, but it would require America as a country taking a step back off the world stage and really having to do the internal work of saying we need to build an economic model that doesn't require that some human beings and Mother Earth and our animal brothers and sisters do not have to be um, harmed in the building of this country. Right. Yeah. Is, do, you, do you guys think that, that, that the combination of, of 45, not to call him by his name, and, and mm -hmm. the pandemic mm -hmm. has, has somewhat been a, been a catalyst for what's going on right now because there is this sense of, of oh my God, the sky is falling on our heads because you, Joe Shea, you mentioned if any of these five things, it's kind of the same thing for the world in general right now is, you know, we're looking at presidential leadership that I don't think anyone ever imagined. We have an economy that, 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 is, that is certainly headed in the wrong direction. We have a pandemic, we have Black Lives Matter, we have all of these issues coming to a head. Is that kind of, a, a, of an ally in being able to see this more clearly? You said, you said, you said head, and that, uh, you know, it's like you got a boil, right? And it comes to a pimple. Yeah. And, you, and then you pop that pimple and all this pus and stuff comes out. You know, we didn't we, we 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 didn't realize how much decadence and and and, and darkness and and stuff was under uh, was still in this country until until this 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 pimple came to it came to the head of this country. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and so 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 all you know all this stuff. So, but the thing is, when you go through this process, with and 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 you have have the potential. For healing, because all the all the dis ease and all the, the 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 stuff jammed down in there, it has the ability to come out, and 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 if the right things are placed on it, if the light and the love and 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 and, and the real work, you know, the digging, you know, all that stuff, if if you start dealing with that, then we have a potential to go to, to go to the next stage, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that you know, I mean, all this stuff is in. 
is in divine order, you mm -hmm. know, and that 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 things uh, that, that that there's as there's a whole lot of potential for so much good and transformation to to cut to come out of this moment, you know. It really is, you know, but it it, it is us up to all of us mm -hmm. to do the work, you know. Yes. And, and I, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm just going to say briefly, um, I wanted to say to what Kamal and um, Thea said, Baba Kamal, is that, you know, there's a, a book called um, The Man Who Talked with the Flowers. It's the story of George Washington Carver's mm -hmm. life. Beautiful, beautiful um, giant of a, of a man. So, but in the book, he just speaks about the different kingdoms. You know how we have the land, um, we also have the sea, and we have the air. So in that energy, man created a synthetic kingdom mm -hmm. and that is all of this stuff mm -hmm. that we are dealing with is synthetic and i feel that you know nature is infinite and then the synthetic kingdom is finite mm -hmm. so for us to um, go through this process of all this pus coming out as baba kamal was saying it's an opportunity to really get back to the infinite mm -hmm. which was needed because the finite is not true power it's only force and there's another book called power versus force, force that yeah. with it, like yeah. david hawkins dr hawkins but yes america is forceful america is not powerful and i feel mm -hmm. that it's an opportunity mm -hmm. for us to get back to power mm -hmm. um, we can only do that through love love yeah. is power yeah i would say there's two specific things i'm i i find gratitude when you know you have to find gratitude in everything um, so there's two specific things that I find gratitude for in the experience of 45. The first thing is that I didn't realize how many white people didn't know they were white until that election. Wow. Yep. It, suddenly white people became racialized because they were so, they were such the baseline for humanity in this country that when, when I would ask them, how did you not know you were growing up around no other people? And yeah. the answer would be, how do you know water was wet? That's <laughs> right. And so what he did was white people were like, oh wait, there's a, there's a stereotype out there about us. There's a, there's a image of us, there's a version of us. And now I have to identify myself or else people could think that I am that, right? Um, to put that into context, you know, we have been living with the stereotypes and having to explain who we are with this racialized identity since, since, the, since we got here, right? And an example I always use to people about that is Elijah McClain, right? He used his last breath to say, I'm not, I'm not like that. Like, I'm not like that. Here he is under someone's heel using his last breath to try to demonstrate I'm not that racialized identity, which is something a white person would never have had to do and never have could have understood until they've had to say to us, well, I'm not like that. I, I don't believe those things. I didn't vote for him. They've had, to, they've had to explain themselves for the first time ever. And so that's something that came out of that election for sure. The other thing that came out of that election or just watching this, this being is the reminder that reality is something we can make up, right? Yeah. Every yeah. day I watch this person make up reality. <laughs> and, and as this person makes up reality, everybody shifts as though they can't make their own realities. And it's a reminder to me that like, well, if you could make that up, I can make this up. I can, I can, I can build this, I can make this what I want it to be. And it's been actually quite empowering to remember that I don't have to have agreement in my reality per se. I can make it up and give myself permission to authorize my own reality. And I think that's what it's needed. We're waiting, sometimes we wait for laws, but these, everything here is inherently unjust. This is the problem. If you're trying to go through the system to beat the system, Audre Lorde said, you can't, you can't tear down the master's house with the master's tools. So, we have to think like what we can do is decide, oh no, we need a new reality. And this is perfect evidence. This whole time is perfect evidence that you can completely make it up. <laughs> yep, yep. I wanna, I wanna talk about 
what you guys do. You're, I mean, you're all like have have multiple skills as artists and teachers and and mentors and community leaders and activists. Um, but the one thing that I know you all have in common that I've that I've watched and and, and marveled at is your ability to perform words powerfully on stage you know the, the Lamert Park poet's description of, of the the iron fist and the silk glove um, and I think of what what kind of catalyzed all this with the terrible 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 thing that happened with George Floyd and and I and Dave Chappelle's 846 monologue and 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 how and the ability for something like that to, to educate and anger and shock and, and, and shame people into what we're doing. And I wonder if that translates somewhat. I've seen what, what you guys do on stage and it's just unbelievably powerful. Thea, you called it a superpower earlier and it is. Um, you've been in front of audiences and hundreds and hundreds of audiences and you've captivated them and you've watched them react to your words and your thoughts and 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 what you want them to walk away with the emotions that they you want them to carry away what is that like and 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 can that be the the one of the things that is a tool to to help us down this path towards where we need to be with this thing you know uh, where uh, when we, a lot of times when we do gigs you know we before we get ready to hit you know we would uh get in a circle and and, and somebody would say a prayer so there's a saxophonist named uh Husto mario i say Husto, say the prayer and Husto <laughs> closes his eyes and bends his head down he says lord please help us to vacate ourselves you know <laughs> get out to get out the get way, out the way. You know, i mean you know because I mean, you know, all, all, all our teachers are in us, all our ancestors are with us, the divine's working. And, that, and, and really, that, that when I say our work is spiritual work, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's really what, it, what it's about, to be of service to, 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 to this energy, you know, and, and, and it, will, it, it will sustain you. It will, it will take care of you. It will lift you up and heal you and, and do what you have to do and pay your light bill sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we just, we're servants. You know? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, I agree. I, I, um, I, it's humbling to have been chosen with these gifts and it's important that more of us recognize it as a gift. Um, I think sometimes, you know, we're very creative people, very creative. And so because it comes with such ease sometimes, we don't think of it as valuable because we've only been taught to value things that come with struggle. And your gift brings you so much ease and joy and pleasure, which are things that you also have a right to that you'll dismiss it as something that is not valuable or essential during this time. Whenever, even during this time, it's, I've, I've been even more present to the idea of like just opening your mouth once you vacate it, just like Baba said, and I always say, lower me, increase you, right? Lower me, increase you. Um, that being a mouthpiece is such an honor and it's also something that evolves. And so part of us not um, getting in that way, like, you were, like, like Baba was saying, is to allow the evolution, right? Like there's times I'm a poet, there's times I'm a podcaster, there's times I'm speaking on panels. There's all of it is art, all of it is poetry, all of it is healing, um, but I have to let it evolve because if I think, oh, I'm supposed to be a novelist or oh, I'm supposed to be this, and I get rigid with it. I start to try to control this thing that literally wants to have a thousand ways of coming out. <laughs> if we could all have a thousand ways, we would, we would have, and we have a thousand ways. Let it have its way. Right. Then it's a, an extremely powerful tool because like Baba Kamal said a few minutes ago, he said that it, there's something liberated about people when people see you do it, right? Or when you see the dancer leap, when you see the poet speak, 
it really does this thing where you say, oh my God, I didn't know I could do that. Like, right. <laughs> because we're one, because right. we're one. So you see me doing is like seeing you do it, right? And, and then we talk, when we share our stories behind it all, then it's like, no, we're just, we're just people who said yes to this, to this job, to say yes to this gift, but you can say yes too. Okay? And you can also find your way of doing that. So I think it's extremely powerful and leads us right back to that oneness conversation. It's beautiful. Wow. wow. So um, just to veggie back off of what they just said, because you know, we don't piggyback. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to veggie back off of what they said, yes, yes, and indeed, you know, um, the vacate yourself, the, um, you know, what Thea was saying, like, it just all, for me, it's it just all in a divine alignment, you know, when the artist, you know, um, magic happens, like, I, I call it making um, magic, and um, in that energy, you have to, um, you know, rid yourself of what you are thinking supposed to happen, and um, I love you know, having freedom from the known. So I feel that art and creativity is exactly that, freedom from the known. And then when you see and hear, you know, these powerful voices, these giants, you know, as um, Kamal and Thea said, like, wow, I didn't know I can do that. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first heard um, Baba Kamal's, um, you know, CD, when he released it, I think it was 96, 97, the album that Lamert Park, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, stop, stop, stop. I was in Watts and I just, it was like, yeah. So that right there, just so inspiring. When I heard, you know, my uncle playing the Watch Prophets, rapping Black in the White World, their 1971 release, it was like, whoa, like, you mm -hmm. have to have some courage to even mm -hmm. listen to this type mm -hmm. of energy, you know, mm -hmm. it's speaking through you, you know, mm -hmm. and, it's, and it is you speaking. So mm -hmm. with that being said, um, yes, you know, I feel that all the artists, all the writers, all the poets, all of us are mm -hmm. now pausing for the cause to really gather ourselves and heal ourselves. You know, this is a time where we're healing ourselves. So on the other side of this, oh my, you world, watch mm -hmm. out, because we yeah. really, really, really have a lot of um, healing to exude. And it's mm -hmm. one thing when you see a musician playing his saxophone he's healing himself mm -hmm. he's always speaking he's healing himself and when you're seeing healing in real time you become healed as well mm -hmm. it's a fantastic metaphor and, and i we need to wrap up uh, i am so proud and honored to uh, have you guys do this and and i feel hopeful and inspired and educated and i hope the audience does too. You are all amazing human beings, um, and and uh, if the world is in your hands, then we're going to be okay. Yeah. That's my that's my two cents. <laughs> 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 so thank you all very much, Kamal, thank Thea, you. Jay, thank you. amazing people, that's and uh, I'm I'm so proud to to have you join this. Um, for the audience, we uh, we want to announce the the. August show will be Wednesday, August 26th at 2 p.m. Pacific. And we have um, author, entrepreneur, and, and uh, crazy elder purpose guy, Chip Conley, coming on the show. Chip just uh, put out a book this past year called Wisdom at Work. Um, he recreated Airbnb. Um, to uh, really go after what what the uh, service industry needed in, from from an online application, and uh, he's just created this place in Mexico called the Modern El, where they are bringing people to teach people how to seek purpose in later life and apply it to the world's social issues. Mm. So it should be a really interesting show. Mm -hmm. so thank you all very thank much. You. For joining. It's Another always a pleasure. Thank you to all three Hello, of you. Okay. Beautiful Thank experience. You. Peace, peace. Sharing space with you all. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Good night, everybody. Yeah.